In this video, we'll write the net ionic equation for ZnCl2 plus NaOH. This is zinc chloride and this is sodium hydroxide. So the first thing we do with net ionic equations is we balance the molecular equation. This right here is the molecular equation. And to balance it, looks like we need to put a two here and then a two over here. So we've balanced the molecular equation for ZnCl2 plus NaOH. Next, we need to write the states. So zinc chloride, that's going to be soluble, so we're going to say it's aqueous. It'll dissolve in water. Chlorides are very soluble. Sodium hydroxide, that's a strong base. It's going to dissociate into its ions. It's soluble, put aqueous, dissolved in water. Zinc hydroxide, we probably should look that up. Hydroxides often are not soluble. So let's look that up on a solubility table here. We'll look for zinc, which is right here on the bottom and then hydroxide right here. So we go down and then over, and we see that I there. So zinc hydroxide, that's insoluble. And if it's insoluble, it's not dissolved. It's a solid at the bottom of the beaker or a test tube. So write a little S for solid here. You could also call this a precipitate. When you react these two compounds, you'll have zinc hydroxide fall to the bottom of the test tube. For sodium chloride, chloride's very soluble. We'll put a little aqueous after that. That will dissolve. So we have our states for each one of these substances here. Now we're going to split the strong electrolytes into their ions. This will give us the complete ionic equation. So for ZnCl2, we know it's a strong electrolyte. It has this aqueous after it. So we need to know the charges. Zinc's kind of a strange one. If you look at the periodic table, most of the time we don't know what these transition metals are. But with zinc, it's always a 2 plus. So we can put a 2 plus up here for zinc as its ionic charge. And then... Chlorine right here, that has a 1 minus. Sodium, group 1 plus. You'll have to look the hydroxide up on a table of common ions, but you can tell since this is positive, it's going to have to be negative, so OH minus. On the product side, we don't mess with the zinc hydroxide because it's a solid. We're not going to split it apart into its ions. It's not split apart in the test tube. It's at the bottom. And we said plus and minus. So we have our charges. Now we can split them up. So we have Zn2 plus, and I won't write aqueous each time. I'll write that at the end. Plus we have that Cl minus. And this 2 here, that subscript, that means we have two chloride ions. Plus we have the sodium ion, that Na plus. And the coefficient in front, that means we have two sodium ions. Plus our hydroxide, OH minus. And we have two hydroxide ions. This two applies to everything. So we'll put a two in front of there. Those are the reactants. For the products here, we said the solids here, we're not going to split up. So we're just going to write ZnOH2. That's zinc hydroxide. And it'll be a solid. It's not going to split apart. Plus, we have our sodium ion, Na+. And again, two of those. And then the chloride ion. And the two applies to everything. So we have two of those. So these are the reactants and the products. This is the complete ionic equation. Now we can cross out the spectator ions. These are ions that appear on both sides of the equation. So if I'm looking for Zn2+, I have it in the reactants, but not in the products. Here it's bonded to the hydroxide. 2Cl-, got those in the reactants and products. Cross them out. Two sodiums here, and then in the products, two. Cross them out. And then everything else is different. So this gives us the net ionic equation. We have the Zn2+, 2OH-, and we get the zinc hydroxide here. Let me clean this up, and then we'll put the states in, and then we'll have a nicely formatted net ionic equation for ZnCl2 plus NaOH. And this is the net ionic equation for zinc chloride plus sodium hydroxide. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.